Hello everybody and welcome to the third How to Parse Twitter tutorial. Um, this tutorial, uh, the two prior tutorials, we've already covered everything you need to actually parse uh, Twitter. Now what we're uh, going to aim to do in this video is uh, either fully explain or begin to explain and then finish up in another video how to add a little bit of logic to this parsing. Uh, unlike like an RSS feed or something like that where typically you know, even like the full Huffington Post feed or, or something like that, their updates aren't super quick, right? They don't, they're not pushing articles, you know, really, really fast. Whereas with Twitter, some of the topics that you might be interested in parsing are very high volume topics. And then other topics might be pretty low volume except for specific days, times, etc. So you might want to um, vary your parsing. A great example of this is, is, um, it works for news articles too, but it, like on Twitter, if you're parsing stock companies during the right before the trading session and through the trading session, right after the trading session, uh, volume is, is going to be quite high, sometimes even as much as 300, 400, 500 percent the volume that you get after that time period. So you wouldn't want to be treating those time periods identically, i.e. you wouldn't want to be pinging and pulling and parsing and visiting uh, Twitter as often as you might during the trading hours. Now you could set something up, I suppose, that if the hour is this, parse this much, but there's a much better way to do this and that's what I'm going to show you. So with that, uh, what we've got going on right here is this makes us an array, basically, and um, gives us um, you know, each individual tweet now what we'd want to do, or what I'm going to be doing, is saying how, um, like how often we visit the page is going to be completely contingent on how many new updates came since the last time we visited, right? So if you visit the site, you wait like three seconds, you visit the site again, and you've got a 78% um, similarity, you probably slow down the pings, right? You can kind of slow down hitting the website and parsing it. If by the same token, if, if you have a 0%, well, you probably missed something or you got really close to missing something. So in that case, you might want to visit a little more often. And so anyway, that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get into it. The, what I'm going to do is build an array out of this. We're going to add this to an array and then we're going to compare arrays. And with that, I'm going to show you guys a simple way to compare um, arrays within Python. And I mean, you could say like for each item in the array, if, you know, identical and you could build, a, you know, like a ratio basically. And that's what this is going to do for us. But uh, it's probably, it's going to use less processing to go this way. Uh, so what you're going to want to do, let's just, just showing you an example here. We're going to import diff lib. And then we're just going to say, um, we're just going to say R1 equals, you guys can follow with me if you want, by the way. Or you can just watch, because uh, we'll be coding out this in, in a little bit, not with the same parameters, of course. Um, and then two, three, four, five, six, right? So in theory, these are 80% similar since uh, arrays, uh, well, never mind. Anyway, um, so then the next thing we want to do is we'll say compare equals, and the um, be beginning to compare uh, is going to be diff lib dot sequence matcher, and then none and then R1, oops, R1, R2, and hit enter. And then finally, um, we'll just say, uh, you, you would assign a variable to this, but we're just going to just print it out. Compare.ratio. And this gives us a ratio, so 0.8, right? So 80% similar, which is correct. You know, four out of five are identical. So that's basically diffLib and, and what diffLib is doing. So let's use that and edit that into our Twitter parser. The first thing I want to do is let's clean this up here. Clean this up. And we don't need to print the length anymore. That was just to kind of show you guys. Um, then what we'll do is we'll say, instead of saying print re.sub, we're going to call this a tweet. So a tweet as our variable name equals our sub. Um, then we're gonna we'll, we can print out um, a tweet. 
And then what I want to do is let's come up here uh, to our variables, and we're gonna say uh, we're gonna add some local variables. Old twit equals an empty array. New twit is gonna equal an empty array for now. And then let's actually let's go ahead and uh, make a, an infinite while loop. So while like one is less than two, for example, we want to perform the following. Okay. So now what we're gonna want to do is uh, got lost here. Okay, yeah, we're down here. Print a tweet. So next thing we're gonna want to do is let's do new twit dot append. Oops, don't capitalize append. And we're gonna append a tweet to it. And now we're gonna start. Uh, let's let's compare the new tweet you know, array to the old tweet array. Obviously, to start. There's going to be no nothing, you know. It'll be a zero percent uh, comparison. But then what we'll end up doing? Well, you'll see. Let's just go through it. So the next thing we want to do is say comparison equals diff lib dot sequence matcher, and again none. And then we want to compare new twit array to the old twit array. And um, that's it there. The next thing we want to do is we'll we'll make the uh, variable how sim for how similar, and that's going to equal comparison dot ratio. And then let's oops shoot let's go back. okay. And now we want to just like let's print another little separator just so it's easy on our eyeballs, and we'll print how sim. Once we've done that. Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure because only the first time through here will old twit be an empty array because what we're about to do is we're about to uh, populate the old twitter array so if we've already populated it once we actually need to empty it before we populate it so even though it's empty right now uh, we do need to consider what's going to happen in the future and so we're going to just go ahead and empty it one more time and now what we want to do is create a for loop, and we'll just say for each item in new twit, so each part of the array in new twit, old twit dot append uh, each item. So we'll just add each thing to it. Then finally, since we were adding new things to new twit, right, we're adding stuff. After we've made the comparison, we also need to clean out new twit, right? So now let's clean out new twit equals, and we'll just say none. And then we'll create a time.sleep. And in here, we'll just say five seconds for now, but we are going to change that up in just a uno momento. So let's save that, and I believe we're ready to run... I hope so. I don't think we've done anything. So let's go ahead and run it and make sure we're uh, spitting out us improper shin tires. Uh, let's see. I see. Okay, we need to indent this. Boom. Okay. Hopefully that'll do it. Let's try it one more time. Pop this over here. I have earned it. New twit, we didn't pop properly uh, capitalize a new twit somewhere. Let's find it. It went pretty quick after the first one, so yep, right here. New twit. So we'll save that. I'm going to close it and reopen it uh, to rerun it. So we're not seeing that other stuff. Drag it over here. All right. Let's see. Darn it, I don't think we imported diffLib as well. Yeah, okay, we need to go to the top and import diffLib. Now we save it. Hopefully, third time's a charm. If we're lucky. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Old twit was not defined. This is just driving me nuts. Old capital T. Close it. Try it again. Yes. Okay. Finally made it to the bottom. Obviously, the first comparison is nothing, and we'll sleep for five seconds. Visits again. Now we see the second comparison is 57% similar. Um, so we could probably have slowed that down a little bit. Now we've got a 70% uh, similarity, and we'll go again. 74. So as you can see, we definitely could slow this down. But how do we do that based on? the percent of similarity. That way we don't have to go through each topic and specify, you know, a specific wait time. 
Well, since we want to wait longer, like the bigger this number of similarity is, the longer we want our wait, right? So why don't we mul use that number to multiply? So I vote, we say time sleep equals how sim times, uh, we'll do, if it was 100%, so I don't know, let's we'll say like eight or something like that. Let's try that out and see how that works with this guy, with Obama. Come over here. So <laughs> zero percent similarity. It sleeps nothing. I uh, should probably thought about that. Next, seventy-one. So it's point seven one times eight. Now we got point six one. So it's gonna be times eight. So obviously we want to bring this number up a little bit higher. So let's make it times. Let's try fifteen. Because really we have all the way to go till close to zero. I would say you wouldn't want to see numbers like frequently under 10. So let's let's say 15 as our wait time. Bring this back over. Obviously zero is gonna go pretty darn quick and then now we've got 85. So 85 and we'll be sleeping for 15 or well 80, 0.85 times 15. So what this is gonna do anyway while we wait um, it, now we're, that's good. Now point thirty two similarity and so on. So what it's going to continue doing is kind of slow us down a little bit. So I would even argue that really you want to have something that the first time it goes through its wait time it'll be too much maybe, but then at the end of it you'd want maybe point thirty times. Uh, so maybe you'd want your wait time to be even like thirty percent, right? Because now this is going to bump us down again because it's pretty high. So as soon as I see the next one, we'll do, yes, yeah, so we definitely have room to grow, so we'll, or to go down a little bit. So now we could say like 30 or something like that. And probably the best way to solve for this, um, you know, inconsistency, right? Because it's going to keep going up and down, right? Because the next time, see right now it's 95%, so this is going to wait a really long time. And then we'll see the next time we hit, it probably going to be either maybe zero or barely zero. So we'll see. Let's wait till it hits here. Yeah. And we wait. It was 15. There we go. Wow, this is like almost perfect. Eh? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the next one's like, wait, catch up. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, you get the point. Now, what I would wager uh, would be an even better idea is instead of using how similar times, you know, 30, what you might want to do is use the average of maybe like the last five how similarities to denote your your current wait time. That way you don't, because what's going to happen here is you're going to do a lot of whip sawing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So instead, you might want to fix that. Now, this, in theory, I believe, over time would stop, like, sl like slowly stop whipsawing so much. But anyway, so that's a, at least a, a naive way to go about um, parsing Twitter uh, and having a little bit of a wait time. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll build an array of, um, we could just build, like, a long, long-term long array, but I don't think that's going to react fast enough. Because you want something... You know, like this is highly reactive, right? So if, if all of a sudden there's a huge explosion, you know, of new tweets, you definitely want your array to be very reactive, but at the same time not too reactive to the point where it's reacting to itself, right? <laughs> so, so in the next one, uh, I think that's what we'll do is we'll add a bit of an array and then we'll work off the average of all those numbers. We'll need at least three, but I'm thinking of doing probably five and then I'll help keep it pretty stable. So anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully I uh, helped a few of you guys out. Thank you for your support and your subscriptions. And until next time.